If you've ever opened up a post in WordPress before, then you're probably already familiar with categories and tags. But there's actually a lot more that goes into taxonomies than what just ships default with WordPress. So in today's video, we're going to talk about what a taxonomy is, how you can use them most effectively, and how you can take your websites to the next level by registering custom taxonomies. But let's start at the beginning. What exactly is a taxonomy? At its most basic level, Taxonomies are a system for grouping and organizing information. Now you're probably already thinking of this as categorizing and tagging information. And most people stop at that most basic form of the taxonomies that are built into WordPress. But there's actually a lot of power that comes with creating your own custom taxonomies. Now we're gonna get to that here in just a minute, but first I think it's important to go over some of the vocabulary we're gonna be using in this video. A taxonomy is a system for grouping information while the term is the actual label you give within that taxonomy. So for example, when you create a new post in WordPress, you're gonna see that it automatically gets the category of uncategorized. Uncategorized is the term and the categories is the taxonomy. Now I think a useful analogy for this is to think of a filing cabinet. Each drawer of that filing cabinet is a taxonomy and within it are a bunch of file folders. Those file folders are all of your terms. Now, of course, within those terms, you have individual posts. Think of these as the individual papers inside those filing folders. Now, where WordPress kind of differs from this analogy is because we're using a digital medium and not a physical one. Because of this, posts can be inside multiple taxonomies and have multiple terms all simultaneously. Now, there are essentially two types of taxonomies. One has hierarchy, which means it can have like a parent-child relationship. You've already seen this inside of categories. This has a checkbox type of UI, and it's probably the most common type of taxonomy you'll see. The other has no hierarchy, which means it all operates at a flat level like tags do. We'll talk about some use cases of why you'd wanna use one over the other later in this video, but let's dive a little bit further into why you wanna use taxonomies anyways, and how they can really help organize the content on your site. As an example, if you ran a food blog, you might wanna go through and group and organize all your recipes by cooking method or difficulty level, or even the type of cuisine. You can then give your visitors a way to navigate through all those different groupings through things like menus or filters. That way they can find exactly what they're looking for. Now this means taxonomies are most useful on sites with large amounts of content. So think about e-commerce stores where you might want to group and categorize information based on product types or product categories, or big blogs where you might have lots of different topics you're trying to cover, or even subtopics within those topics. By giving all this information a lot of structure, you can really create a better user experience and boost your SEO. But so far, I realize this is just a bunch of theory, so let's jump into a more practical example, and I've set up this recipe blog so we can put these different things into action. So we're gonna start here with this demo site I've created with these recipes. We have about nine different posts in here, and we're gonna start with the default tags and categories. So here inside categories, you can see I've created categories for appetizer, beverage, dessert, and main dish. Now all of these could have subcategories within them, but for the sake of this demo, I only did that to the beverages, which has cocktails, hot, and smoothie. As for the tags, I've decided to use that system for dietary preferences like vegetarian, gluten-free, and low carb. These don't really need hierarchy because they're being used more like labels to just highlight specific qualities of the recipe. And while you might think this is enough, and in some cases it could be, let's suppose that the visitors to our recipe blog want to start viewing our recipes by cooking method. We could, of course, go into our categories and start adding things like stovetop and baking and grilling, but when we mix two completely different concepts inside of one category set or one taxonomy, things start to get a little bit messy. And this problem only gets worse as we start to add more things we might wanna organize and group this information by. It could be by cuisine or by difficulty level. If we start sticking all of these things inside of our one category taxonomy, then the whole system we created to group and organize our information becomes a huge headache to manage and it doesn't really serve its purpose anymore. This, my friend, is exactly where custom taxonomies come into play. While categories and tags might be a great starting place, we're by no means limited to just those default taxonomies. Tools like Advanced Custom Fields actually give us a very easy way to create our own taxonomies inside of our install. So let's go ahead and load up Advanced Custom Fields and take a look at how we'd create our first taxonomy. Back here inside of our install, we'll go to Plugins and click Add New Plugin. We're gonna search for Advanced Custom Fields and we'll go ahead and Install and Activate. 
Now with advanced custom fields installed on our website, we have this new ACF menu over here on the left-hand side, and within it is a item for taxonomies, which we'll go ahead and click. Now, since we don't have any custom taxonomies registered on this page, our only option here is to add a new taxonomy. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the add new button. We'll go ahead and start with doing our cooking methods taxonomy. So we'll go inside our plural label and add cooking methods. For the singular label, we can just do cooking method. And when we tab through, this will automatically give us a taxonomy key of cooking hyphen method. This does need to be lowercase and you can use underscores or dashes. Now, lastly, we need to decide which kind of post type this taxonomy should be associated with. If I click into this menu here, you'll see all the post types on our website right now, which are just the default post, pages, and media. Now, if you have custom post types installed on your website, then you'll see those here. We're just gonna go ahead and assign this cooking method to our post, since that's how we've gone ahead and created all of our recipes. The last thing we need to do on this page is go down here and decide if we want this term to have hierarchy or not. Remember, taxonomies with hierarchy give us the ability to have that parent-child relationship among our terms, while non-hierarchy taxonomies give us a flat structure. Both of these taxonomies have different UIs inside the posts. I've always found the checkbox system for the hierarchy taxonomies easier to use, and the non-hierarchy taxonomies use the search function, which can make it hard to keep track of your terms and often leads to duplications such as plural and non-plural versions or misspellings. For that reason, I typically prefer taxonomies with hierarchy, but that decision should be made on a case-by-case -case basis. For cooking methods, I think we'd wanna go ahead and use the hierarchy system. That makes the most sense here, so we'll go ahead and toggle that on. However, if this were something like an ingredients taxonomy, we wouldn't really need the parent-child relationship and it wouldn't be necessary, so you might opt out of having this hierarchy. There are some advanced options here if you toggle that on, and this can go a little bit into the weeds. I think it's out of the scope for this tutorial, but if you start playing with taxonomies, I would encourage you to go through here because there are some ways you can customize these even further. But for now, let's just go ahead and save our taxonomy and see if this new taxonomy shows up inside of our posts. Now, if we hover over post, we can see our all post, add new post, categories and tags, which were all there by default. But now we have this new taxonomy for cooking methods that we just created. So go ahead and click on that here. And inside of this UI, just like with the categories or tags, we can start adding our terms. So I'm gonna go ahead and add grilling and we'll go ahead and add that cooking method, which we can see here now and we'll add baking. And we'll go ahead and add the cooking method. But you can also add these terms on the fly as well. So let's just go ahead and go back into our post here. And I don't know, we'll go into this mac and cheese recipe and we'll look over on the right hand side. We see our categories and we see our tags, but down here at the bottom, we have cooking methods where you can see the grilling and baking we just added. And we'll go ahead and add a new cooking method here. We'll scroll down and we'll do stove top and click add cooking method. So now that we added that here, it's automatically checked it on and we've now registered this new term within our cooking methods taxonomy. Now that we have that new taxonomy registered, you'll wanna start showing it on the front end of your website. You could do this by just showing that term on the front end of the post, or you could even do things like creating an archive page, creating some kind of menu that goes through all your different taxonomies, or even creating a search and filter type system. This just makes it really easy for anybody who wants to search through your recipes by cooking method. Let's say they're only into your grilling recipes. They can go in and find just those recipes that are applicable to them. And of course, when you wanna add more taxonomies like cuisine or difficulty level, you just repeat the same process and then add those terms to your posts. Hopefully by this point in the video, you're starting to think beyond categories and tags and come up with different ways you can use custom taxonomies to better group and organize your information. Now, before we wrap this video up, I wanna leave you with a few best practices that I've learned over the years. The first is to plan ahead. The organization and structure of your taxonomies are really gonna benefit from thinking these things ahead of time and mapping things out before you just start adding a bunch of taxonomies on the fly. My second tip is to keep it simple. Taxonomies can be a really powerful tool, but just because you can create a custom taxonomy doesn't mean you should. Think about it before you start adding a custom taxonomy and make sure this is something that's really gonna actually benefit the visitor of your website. Third, make sure to use descriptive names. Now I know naming things on the internet is very hard, but you're gonna wanna use something that when you come back in six months will make perfect sense then just as it does now. 
Fourth, I would encourage you to be very careful about not letting your different taxonomies overlap. Sometimes you can get carried away and then you're not really sure which different taxonomies certain posts should belong to and all your organization goes out the window. Lastly, be consistent. You're gonna to wanna to come up with some kind of naming convention that makes sense across all the different taxonomies on your website, especially if you're gonna have clients that are using this system, it needs to be really clear instead of really clever. If you've been just sticking to the basics of categories and tags, then I hope this video has opened your eyes to some of the possibilities that are available when you start using things like custom taxonomies. To go along with this video, I put everything into a blog post, which you can see down in the description of this video. This goes through everything I covered inside this video, but has some screenshots and walks you through step-by-step step in case you ever need to repeat that process again and just need a quick refresher. If you learned something in this video, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. And if you wanna make sure to catch the next one, then hit subscribe and we'll see you then.